Funding for Prepare Yourself has been provided by the Sonoma County Department of Emergency Management. Actions change outcomes. Let's get ready together. Learn more at socoemergency.org slash get ready. Hello and welcome to this edition of Prepare Yourself, your delicious and nutritious informational multivitamin for disaster preparedness. I'm Chase Overholt, one of your hosts for the show. Thanks, Chase. And I'm Hannah Lee, your other charming guide for our program. Let's dive right in and learn what you can do to prepare yourself because disasters and emergencies can happen at any time. Now, if you've been following our show, you'll know that we've covered the ins and outs of disaster preparedness, from packing a go bag to hardening your home. Hannah and I have learned so much through this program, and we hope you have too. That's right. And today, we'll be talking about a very important topic, neighborhood and community preparedness. In any emergency, it's crucial to work together with those around you to share information, resources, and assistance. On this episode, we'll cover how to build connections with people in your neighborhood, what to include in a neighborhood evacuation plan, and how to take stock of resources in your community, and so much more. I am so sad that this is our last episode. I'm really gonna miss you. I had so much fun learning together. Aw, uh, don't worry. I'll still be in the neighborhood. I feel like that was supposed to be a pun based on your inflection, but I'm not really sure if it was. I'm not really sure either. Neighborhood puns are hard. You try coming up with one. <laughs> it's okay, buddy. You tried your best. We'll be right back with our show after these messages. Stay tuned. Have you heard all this buzz about preparing for disasters? Word on the street is that disaster preparedness is super important. Nah, if there's an emergency, I can just wing it. I don't know. Maybe you should listen to this. Now that's what I call Disaster Hits Volume 5 is 48 hours of toe-tapping, knee-slapping, hand-clapping disaster songs all compiled for you on this multi-platinum album. This special TV offer contains 10 tracks of disaster hits to get you moving and grooving, like I Evacuated with the Girl Next Door, Knock Knock Who's There, Neighbors Helping Neighbors. We live in different houses but on the same street. Now's the perfect time to get together and meet. My grandma needs support, and you've got three cats to move. Let's evacuate together, what have we got to prove? Neighbors helping neighbors to make it through. Get to know your neighbors, and they will too. Neighbors helping neighbors, oh can't you see? Neighbors making plans in our community. You are my neighbor. I am your neighbor. We need to prepare ourselves together. We may not speak very often. I may not even really like you, but I think we can work it out. Sweet deal! Don't forget to tell all your friends and neighbors. Now that's what I call Disaster Hits Volume 5 is not available in stores. Order now by calling the number on your screen or send check or money order. Make a one-time payment of $129.95 or you can choose our easy-to-use payment plan of $10.83 per month for 12 months. Rush delivery available. Call now. Welcome to my neighborhood. Recently, we've been talking a lot about being prepared for emergencies. I got to thinking that the neighbors here in the woodland could benefit from making a plan about who we can count on to do what during a disaster. Each of us has unique talents that the community as a whole could benefit from. For instance, I'm good at collecting things and keeping stock of supplies. Rabbit is very experienced at provisioning. He knows where the food is and how to keep it safe. Mm, more or less. Huh? Rattlesnake is amazing when it comes to sending out the alarm. They can help get the word out as soon as a crisis happens. So it seemed like a great idea for us all to meet in person. Oh, and for those who could not come in person, we set up a virtual connection. <clears throat> Thank you everyone for taking the time to come today. It's good to get to know everyone. Have we decided what our responsibilities will be? I might consider sharing my chainsaw. It's very good. 
and I have a generator to power my burrow in an emergency. It's just top notch. Only the best for the burrow. I'm making a first aid kit. The planning process may take time. Everyone might not agree on everything. Important things for every neighborhood group to establish are an emergency meeting spot, who will supply what, and how to get in contact with each other. The more we have a strong community, neighbors helping neighbors, I think the more prepared we will be, but also the stronger and healthier we will be. I would like to encourage every person, everybody, to be prepared, whether it's an earthquake, a wildfire, be prepared. So why we do this at a, a neighborhood on nearly a street level, a block level basis, is because when an emergency hits, you're gonna be running outside your door, it's those five or 10 neighbors that are gonna help you and where you're gonna be able to help your neighbors. Okay, is there anything else we need to address? Uh, Wolf, uh, uh, do, you, do you have anything to add? There might be bumps in the road, but getting to know your neighbors and making a plan is a great way to prepare yourself! Space. Something everyone needs sometimes. These are the voyages of the Starship Endeavor OG-1. It's five episode mission to explore the multiverse and bring beings together to boldly go where no animal, vegetable, or mineral has gone before. Captain's Log, star date 1221.12. We're about to enter the cataclysmic system where irregular solar and tectonic activity is predicted to cause unprecedented destruction. We're here to bring Emergency Preparedness Awareness, or EPA, to all residents in the outlying territories. Captain Smirk, we have crossed over the intergalactic energy field and are now entering the cataclysmic system. Splendid. Thank you, AI. First Commander Aurora, what is the local time? The time is 1600 hours and 23 minutes. In other words, now. Splendid. Mr. Sock, what are the airspace conditions? Cloudy, with a chance of disaster. Just as I suspected, severe climate disruptions are threatening to... I am homing in on the distress signal. It is from the second star in the subsector. Pull it up on screen. Starfleet Command, this is Princess Leah calling on an emergency channel. The weather is becoming increasingly severe. As you can see, the wind is picking up, the rain is getting heavier. And we've never seen lightning like this. I am stressed out. If we don't take action soon, our community will experience devastating floods. We need your assistance. Gracious me, that sounds treacherous indeed. Do you need our assistance? Ah, uh, yeah. I literally just said that. This is quickly turning into our most desperate hour. Help us, OG-1. You're our only hope. Princess? Princess! Are you there? Do you read? Sock. Analysis? My sensors indicate we have lost the signal. Very astute, Mr. Sock. Looks like we got here just in time. <laughs> All right. Set those blasters for... No. Ah. Mm. No, smirk. Not again. <sighs> Set course for the primary port in the sub sector. The sub port. Course laid in, Captain. Beep boop, beep boop, bop, beep boop. Mm.
We have come out of hyperspeed and are approaching the support T minus five minutes to landing. The resident signature indicates that excessive and unrelenting precipitation will breach levees in approximately 48 hours. There is still time, but we need to act quickly. Captain, we are being hailed by several planets. Go ahead, patch them through. Hey, what do you want? Uh, you called us. Oh, oh, right. Well, this morning I was taking a snooze in my burrow, and what do you know, everything started rattling around. I think it might have been an earthquake. It wasn't too bad, but I'm a little apprehensive that a bigger quake might come pretty soon. Well, you've called the right crew, skunk. First Commander, what advice do you have for Sonny? One thing I would do is check on all the other animals in your neighborhood and get their contact information. Have you done that? No. Why would they want to talk to me? I'm a skunk. They think I stink. Oh, well, I'm sure that's not true. Believe it. Well, when an emergency happens, the first animals who can reach you to offer help will probably be your neighbors. So if a bigger earthquake happens, you'll want to be able to contact each other. Hmm. I guess you have a point. If a bigger quake does happen and my burrow caves in, I could always call my neighbor Badger to come help get me out. He's a good digger with those long claws. That's a great idea. Setting up a contact list is one of the first steps to building a unified and more prepared community. Captain, we are receiving another distress signal. Patch them through. Sonny, hold on. We'll be right back with you in just a few moments. Fine. I'll wait. This is Captain Smirk from the Federation Starship Endeavor. Hello, hello. Is this thing on? This is Slater, over. Go ahead, Slater. We hear you loud and clear. Okay, good. Now, Buck ain't here right now, and he's much better at these doohickeys than me. I still don't understand how y'all fit in this little box. Anyway, I'm calling because the wildfire is headed for our town, and it's moving fast. Those sound like very dangerous conditions. To live long and prosper, you should leave. Immediately. That's correct. Have you all evacuated? Well, our neighbors Ruth and Florence heard the evacuation warning on the radio. They went and told old man Willie, and then he came over and warned us. Oh, yeah, totally. Oh, yes, I'm very glad to hear that. Sounds like you were very prepared. It's great that you know your neighbors so well and had an evacuation plan already established. Well Why done. Don't even bother contacting these space jerks. Putting me on hold. I'll put you on hold. Is that a talking skunk? Indeed. We are helping him prepare for a potential earthquake. Sonny, we can all hear you. Please mute yourself. Ah, oh, stinkers. Slater, is there anything we can do to assist you at this time? Well... We ain't got enough water left to fight this fire because we've been in a bad drought these last couple years. Hmm, what to do? What to do? Have you tried a fire extinguisher? Hello? Hello? Hello, OG1, can you hear me? Princess Leah, good to have you back. We've almost reached the sub port and we'll be with you shortly. Thank you, Captain Smirk. I've gathered the Cataclysmic Grand Council to see how we can work together to address the imminent flooding. We can't handle this solo. Uh... No, you big furball. I wasn't talking about Sean Solo. He's out there helping direct traffic with my brother, yeah. Duke Groundwalker. Yeah. Did y'all say flooding? As in water? As in you have too much of it? We could really use some over here. You're more than welcome to it. We've got more than we can handle. We just need a way to get it to you. Might I suggest our convenient interplanetary water transporting device to beam over the floodwaters? Highly illogical. Do not question the technology. Beam up the water, snotty. You got it, Captain. <laughs> right away.
Well, darn tootin'. That's just terrific. Thank you much. You're quite welcome, young man. It's our duty to provide... A part of my burrow just collapsed. Say, skunk man, I'll bet Buck and I could give you some help with that there burrow of yours. You'd really do that? Sure thing, bud. We'll all head over as soon as we get this wildfire situation under control. Hmm. It seems like there are many things that planets can do to help each other during emergencies. Once we land, I'd like to help you all set up some permanent lines of interplanetary communication so that you can stay in touch and provide support when needed. Thank you, OG-1. Thanks, I, I guess. Thanks, y'all. <sighs> Splendid. Our work here is done. On to the next mission. Engines at maximum warp. Negative, Captain. We're about to touch down at the subport. Splendid. Initiate landing gear and set blaster. Captain, I believe it's time for your nap. May I take the helm? Blaster. <laughs> Preparedness, the next frontier, and transmission. Previously on Kid Scientist. Um, I had an idea for an episode starter. I face this and I'm like playing with it and doing things with it. And then I say, oh, hello. Oh, hello, I'm Kiki, and this is Flan Head with me, Kid Scientist. Gather round, everyone, because today we'll be learning about a very important part of staying prepared, knowing your neighbors and community. When a disaster or an emergency happens, who are the first people to show up on the scene to help? Firefighters? Police? EMTs? Wrong! Well, first responders are usually the first to respond, it's in the name. But in many cases, our neighbors are the first people who can reach us to offer help and support during an emergency because they're nearby. So it's important that neighborhoods and communities come together ahead of time to prepare. Here's some things you can do to build community preparedness. Number one, connect with your neighbors. You might know the person living next door to you, but do you know the person all the way at the end of the street? Well, you can organize a meet and greet so that people in your neighborhood can get to know each other. Who doesn't love a good party? Offer some free snacks and you can bet that even I'll be there. Plus, you can learn about any skills or resources people might have that could help in a disaster. Maybe one of your neighbors is a nurse or a firefighter. Maybe someone owns sandbags or a generator. Hey, that almost rhymed. Number two, get in touch. It's important to know how to contact your neighbors in the event of an emergency. Make a list of names, addresses, and phone numbers to share. You can also create a community page on a website like Facebook or Nextdoor and invite your neighbors to join. It's a great way to reach all of them at once. Number three, practice evacuating together. Aww. Planning a neighborhood evacuation drill is a great way to make sure that everyone knows what they need to pack, which exit routes to take, and where to meet up. Don't forget to inform local public safety officials of your plans. Afterwards, hold a meeting to discuss what everyone learned from the exercise. What worked? What didn't? Is there anyone who needs additional support? You can even use what you learn to help plan your next evacuation drill. Grown-ups are always telling me, don't talk to strangers. But in this case, it's good to make connections with the people who live close to you, even if you don't know them. And your neighbors shouldn't be strangers. It might feel awkward at first, but building community is an essential part of being prepared. Well, that's all the time we have for today, everyone. And remember, it's always better to be prepared for anything and have nothing bad happen than have something bad happen and not be prepared at all. This has been advice from a small child on the planet with a kid scientist. The 
that's me. Bye! And we're back. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Prepare Yourself. We hope you enjoyed the show and learned a little something about how you can prepare for a disaster or an emergency. Let's quickly go over what we covered in this episode. We learned why building community is a key aspect of disaster preparedness. We also learned how to build resilience and social support in your neighborhood. And that your neighbors are usually the first people who can reach you in the event of a disaster because they're closest to you. That's right. Wow. Being on this show has been an incredible experience. It's hard to believe that we're already at the end. Right? I might even miss all your corny jokes. <laughs> Sounds like you haven't emotionally prepared yourself for the end of the show. Mm, all right, never mind. I'm definitely not going to miss that. That one was barely even a joke. Oh, come on. I know you secretly love it. <laughs> but all jokes aside, thank you all so much for watching the show and joining us on this eclectic disaster preparedness journey. It's been real. It has. We hope that the stories and humor in our program have helped you remember why it's so important to plan ahead and that it can even be fun to prepare yourself. Now we've said this a lot, but it can be difficult to plan ahead for situations we never want to encounter. Yes siree. And part of emergency preparedness is acknowledging that disasters happen and that can take a toll on our mental health. If you've ever felt stressed and overwhelmed by preparing for a disaster, we want to let you know that you're not alone. So to help us process these feelings, through music and dance, we have a very special guest with us today to close out our show. Please put your hands together for Sky Palace. Take a breath, baby, and trust me, I got you. I see the look in your eyes, and I'm feeling it too. Let's talk about mental health and what you might be going through. Well, it can take a lot to process all your thoughts, I know, oh, oh, but you're not alone. Oh, oh. And it's safe, babe Sharing your emotions can be a scary notion indeed Just know there's a community We're on call, yeah You can say no, 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 no Oh yeah, 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 yeah Take your time and let us know When you're ready, we'll be ready Stressful, all right, and the fear and trauma is true. The way it affects me, babe, might be different than it is for you. We're not here to provide a solution or fix for you. We're here to listen, babe. Just say what you need to. I feel anxious every time it's a hot summer day and there's a gust of wind. I used to love a cool breeze, but now it just puts me on edge. I'm sad all the time, and I can't stop crying, even though it's been two years since my family lost our home. Little things feel like insurmountable tasks. Trying to pack just a few things in an emergency go bag is a huge mental struggle. So you're opening up. And you're telling us how you feel It's valid, babe Your emotions are completely real You might want to hide Or you might want to conceal It's hard, baby But this is how we learn to heal Reduce your stress With the disaster distress highlight it's there any time, try it out, yeah. Call 1-800-985-599, oh, 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 give it a go, oh, oh. Or text talk with us to 66746. And let them know, no, 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 what y'all go, go, going through. 
Cause they're professionals Are you ready? Cause they're ready Yeah, you heard it right We've got so much love for you We hear you, babe And we hope this gets you through Please remember this song Don't forget the resources too We care, baby, and we're here supporting you.